Hello students and welcome to Nancy Drew 101. What's that you say? You didn't sign up for this class? Well too bad. It's a requirement. Today I will be giving an overview of the Nancy Drew games by Her Interactive. The ultimate goal here is for you to be able to impress a first date with all your Nancy Drew knowledge even if you've never played the games before because, according to a study I totally didn't just make up, 99.9% .9 of the population are incredibly turned on by Nancy Drew lore. Think of this as like a spark notes for Nancy Drew. If you're already a big Nancy Drew fan and you're anything like me, your mind is like a ravenous monkey gobbling up every piece of Nancy Drew content in its past. As Professor Hotchkiss says, or something like that. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, if you're already a Nancy Drew fan, I think you will still enjoy this video. Consider this a challenge to see how much of a Nancy Drew fan you are. If you watch until the end and realize you already knew everything I'm going to be talking about, congratulations, I will grant you a certificate that is, for practical purposes, entirely figurative, congratulating you on being an ultimate Nancy Drew fan. I partly created this video because I know a lot of my friends learned about Nancy Drew through me and are a bit bemused by the whole thing, so I wanted to be able to introduce them to the joy that is Nancy Drew and help them not be completely lost when I'm yammering on about Sunny June or the Midnight in Salem controversy or Nancy's relationship drama. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and also give me a high rating on Rate My Professor, please. I crave validation. I have separated this video into five sections to give us all a much needed sense of structure in our lives, at least for the duration of this video. First section is Nancy Drew, Last Train to Background Canyon. It would be remiss of me to talk about the Nancy Drew games and not mention the Nancy Drew books, as they are what started it all, both being the inspiration for the games and, more importantly, what started my personal interest in Nancy Drew. The very first Nancy Drew book, Secret of the Old Clock by Carolyn Keene, was published in 1930. The series was created by the Strademeyer Syndicate, a book packaging company, which means essentially that they contacted different ghostwriters to write certain books under strict specifications. And I'm sorry to disappoint you, this does mean that there is no Carolyn Keene. Carolyn Keene is a pseudonym for a whole host of ghostwriters. As is Franklin W. Dixon, the purported author of the Hardy Boys series, another Stratemeyer Syndicate series, which is basically Nancy Drew but for boys, because apparently book series are another unnecessarily gendered thing in this world. The Hardy Boys solve mysteries much like Nancy Drew does, but in their case they need two of them to do it. Nancy can do everything they do solo, backwards, and in sensible orthopedic shoes. One of the most interesting things about the Nancy Drew books, in my opinion, is that all titles published pre-1957 were revised around the time of the 1960s, partly to remove racist stereotypes, although it was the 1960s, so they definitely need further revisions in terms of that, as well as to shorten and modernize them. Sometimes these revisions were minor and kind of inexplicable, such as changing a word to a different synonym, but sometimes they completely changed the plot, such as in the case of The Secret of Shadow Ranch. My favorite thing about the original Shadow Ranch is that Nancy shoots a snake with a gun and this was taken out in the rewrite! Why?! <laughs> This information is pretty much irrelevant to the games, other than to mention that Her Interactive based their game Shadow Ranch on the updated version of Shadow Ranch. But I just find it really interesting and wanted to mention it. If you think there are a lot of Nancy Drew games, then you will be positively shocked the amount of Nancy Drew books there are. The books have evolved over the years, and the different like categories of Nancy Drew series have come to kind of define these different eras for the books. Many of the Nancy Drew games are based on books, like Secret of Shadow Ranch, but they're mainly based on titles taken from the Nancy Drew file series, which restyled Nancy as being more mature and modern for the 1980s. If you're at all interested, I recently started a series where I highlight the differences between the Nancy Drew books and the games, which I will link in the little, like, toggle thing. I also briefly want to mention a bit of the history behind Her Interactive, the company that develops the Nancy Drew video games. They were originally a division of American Laser Games, a now defunct company which created light gun games, of all things. <laughs> what prompted them to start making games aimed at girls? One of history's greatest mysteries. 
Her interactive's very first game was called Mackenzie and Co. And no, <laughs> Mackenzie isn't the name of the main character, but the name of her SUV. And it's actually an acronym for, get ready for this, Marvelous, Cool, Kinetic Movement, Everlasting Friendship, Nonconformist, Zany, Ingenious, and Empowered. Amazing. <laughs> Before releasing the Nancy Drew games, her interactive released a full motion game based on the Vampire Diaries, which I badly want to play. Following that, they released the first Nancy Drew game, Secrets Can Kill, and became so successful that they ended up buying out American Laser Games. Their original slogan was for girls who aren't afraid of a mouse, but later became Dare to Play. I tried to Google exactly when this change occurred and I couldn't find anything, but I did find a scientific article. I learned that lab mice are afraid of men, but not women, which is very interesting. Nancy Drew, the Phantom of Premise. All right, now we know the history, but what the heck are these games about? Well, essentially the Nancy Drew games are point and click puzzle games. Each one follows Nancy to a distinct, unique location where she encounters a small cast of characters which each have their own hidden motives and secrets which are uncovered over the course of the game. They're intended to be semi-educational games, although some lean more into this premise than others. <coughs> Secret of the <coughs> Scarlet Hand. <coughs> Excuse me. The gameplay is generally divided pretty evenly between doing puzzles and talking to suspects. They've definitely evolved over this series, with the later games being more puzzle heavy, while the earlier games are focused more on point and click logic rather than, say, Sudoku. And by point and click logic, I mean like finding an item and figuring out what it could be used for, like finding a pair of wire cutters and thinking where you could cut some wires. Her Interactive has also experimented with making Nancy Drew games of different genres with limited success. First of these is the Nancy Drew Dossier series, which was cancelled after two games, and our I Spy style hidden object games. They also released an app aimed at younger kids called Codes and Clues, which attempts to teach them the basics of coding. Most fans kind of hate Codes and Clues, and I have to say I've never played it, but I think it's great that her interactive is teaching like young girls how to do computer science. Nancy Drew. Characters. Can kill. Of course, we have to start with Nancy Drew, the ma'am, the myth, the legend. Nancy is the main playable character in the games. She's 18 years old, and yes, I know that she sounds like a middle-aged woman, but that would be because her main voice actress is a middle-aged woman. First thing you should know about Nancy is that she has an almost unhealthy obsession with mysteries, and, like all good fictional detectives, she seems to attract them like some finely tuned mystery magnet. It is often emphasized that Nancy is an amateur detective, even though she has over 33 cases under the belt holding up her mom jeans. This really just means that she doesn't get paid. She's also a total square, straight edge, no sex until marriage, probably doesn't buy real leather type of girl. In the book, she's often portrayed as being sophisticated and very well put together, but I prefer her game incarnation, in which she is a very earnest, sincere dork. She is also very outspoken and never hesitates to ask potentially intrusive questions in the pursuit of solving a case. In terms of appearance, she's not like other girls because she's not a redhead. She has Titian hair. Get it right. Not that you would ever know because her interactive go to great lengths to conceal Nancy Drew's appearance, apart from a few coy silhouettes and blurry photos in certain games. Next, I want to introduce you to Nancy's family and friends, starting with Ned Nickerson. Ned is Nancy's long-term boyfriend and has about as much personality as Kitty Litter Sand. In the more recent games, there's been some spicy relationship drama between Nancy and Ned. Basically, Nancy cares more about mysteries than Ned, which I think is a sign that she isn't really in love with him. Honestly, if I was her friend, I'd tell her to just dump him. Bess and George. Bess and George are Nancy's two main friends in the games. Bess is blonde and a lovable doofus, and George is a brunette and a lovable tomboy. They are semi-omniscient and can give Nancy hints over the phone. They also make in-person appearances in the few of the games. And you can even play as Bess in Legend of the Crystal Skull, in which Nancy relentlessly uses Bess and continuously puts her in situations which make her feel uncomfortable. Bess and George are unquestionably 
deadly loyal. The Hardy Boys, remember them? From when I mentioned them a few minutes ago? Much like Bess and George, Frank and Joe show up in a few games and are regular phone contacts. Their brothers, Joe is a himbo, and Frank is the fan favorite alternative for Nancy's boyfriend. Carson Drew, Nancy's rich lawyer daddy. Her mother died when she was young, so she is 100% a daddy's girl. We have never seen Carson in the flesh, only heard his voice over the phone, so the jury's still out on whether he's a dilf or not. Togo, Nancy's dog, a good boy, has never actually appeared in the flesh in any of the games, so this is my formal petition, her interactive. If you're listening, please put Togo in game 34 if it ever actually happens. <laughs> Hannah Gruen, the Drew family's housekeeper who had a much larger role in the books, although she still occasionally emails Nancy in a few of the games. Eloise Drew. Nancy's cool wine aunt. This hasn't been confirmed by Hero Interactive, but it has been confirmed in my brain. Nancy stays at her house in Florida in the very first Nancy Drew game, Secrets Can Kill. Lastly, I briefly want to mention some iconic recurring characters. These are all characters who have made their presences known in at least three games, whether as actual character models, phone contacts, or the human personification of a hurricane. There are a few other characters which make appearances in some shape or form in multiple games, but I don't want this video to be three hours long, so I have made the executive decision that they're not important. Sorry, Charlena Purcell. The most important recurring character is probably Sunny June. Sunny June is a character mostly infamous for being unable to hold down a job and leaving behind messes for Nancy to clean up. Nancy often takes a position and learns that Sunny was the last person to hold it before her and has made her life approximately 45% more difficult, although he does often leave little puzzle hints scattered around. He is obsessed with aliens and conspiracy theories. Think Mulder from The X-Files, but not played by David Duchovny. I guess that makes Nancy the scully to his Mulder, which is a strange thought. Sunny June finally appeared in person in the Shattered Medallion, but everyone was disappointed because he kind of sucked. Professor Beatrice Hotchkiss, an absolute icon. In her first appearance in the series, in Treasure in the Royal Tower, she unabashedly orders 50 chicken wings. What a queen. <laughs> She's a somewhat scatterbrained historian, and there's a running joke in the series that she can never remember Nancy's name, Prudence Rutherford. Although she has never physically appeared in the games, Prudence Rutherford is a name which is automatically familiar to Nancy Drew fans. She is a rich, white, upper-class socialite. She is wonderfully eccentric and an absolutely audacious fashion icon. Give Prudence Rutherford a Vogue cover! Deirdre Shannon, my personal favorite option for an alternative romantic partner for Nancy. Deirdre is originally framed as Nancy's rival with a crush on Ned and a lot of internalized misogyny. Although it's my theory that this crush on Ned is just a displaced crush on Nancy because she also has a lot of internalized homophobia. In Game 33, Midnight in Salem, Nancy and Deirdre team up and have so much chemistry together they put those paper mache, baking soda and vinegar volcanoes to shame, and I don't say that lightly. It's the perfect enemies to lovers romance, people. Nancy Drew, stay tuned for games. There are 33 main games in the Nancy Drew series, and you might be wondering, what are these games even about? Fret not, friend. I will enlighten you and provide a short synopsis for each of the 33-ish games. I'm gonna confine myself to one-sentence summaries for each game so I don't just ramble on forever. And don't worry, they'll be spoiler-free. I'm going to try to avoid just repeating info that's already given by the titles like The Haunted Carousel. You know the carousel is haunted. I don't also need to tell you that. I will also put the abbreviation each game is commonly referred to online up on the screen while I'm talking about it. Game number one, Secrets Can Kill. One of the few games to feature murder and the only game with 2D graphics. Secrets Can Kill sees Nancy go undercover at a high school to determine which of the students killed one of their peers. Game number two, stay tuned for danger. Nancy goes to New York City to investigate a series of death threats on the set of a popular TV soap opera. 
Game number three, message in a haunted mansion. A lesbian couple, this is true in my mind at least, <laughs> invite Nancy to investigate spooky hauntings at their spooky haunted b and in San Francisco. Game number four, treasure in the royal tower. While on a ski vacation, Nancy is presented with a chance to search Marie Antoinette's private tower to find her long lost treasure. And it all takes place in Wisconsin for some reason. <laughs> Game number five, the final scene. Nancy learns about the horrors of gentrification when her friend Maya is kidnapped and held hostage in a historic theater slated for destruction. Game number six, Secret of the Scarlet Hand. Nancy takes an unpaid internship at a museum which exhibits Maya artifacts, but her dull intern duties are eventually, like an hour into the five hour game, interrupted when one of the relics is stolen. Game seven, Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake. This game bravely tackles the premise. What if all doggos weren't good doggos? As Nancy uncovers the secrets of a lakeside cabin previously owned by a dog-loving 1930s mobster. Game 8, The Haunted Carousel. Nancy investigates mysterious and perhaps ghostly sabotages at an amusement park while a sentient Easy Bake Oven gives her riddles. Game 9, Danger. On Deception Island. A lone whale strays into the vicinity of a small Pacific Northwest town and the community clashes over how to resolve the situation. Mainly what you need to know is whales rule! Game 10, Secret of Shadow Ranch. Yeehaw, Buckaroo, giddy up because Nancy's going to Arizona to stay at a sexy cowboy ranch, which is being terrorized by a phantom horse. The phantom's reign of terror, and yes, that is a horse pun, appears to be connected to the mysterious hidden treasure of an outlaw from the 1800s. This is my absolute favorite Nancy game, so I'm giving it two sentences due to personal bias. So soon me. Game 11, Curse of Blackmore Manor. Nancy travels to England to stick her nose into the business of a potentially cursed old moneyed family in England. They all talk like this. Game 12, Secret of the Old Clock. Nancy travels farther than she ever has before, all the way back to the 1930s where she experiences the Great Depression and mini golf, all while searching for a missing will. Game 13, last train to Blue Moon Canyon. Nancy and a gang of other famous detectives, who collectively look like they would make a perfect gay brunch group, are invited by a Paris Hilton wannabe to solve a historic mystery on an old timey train. Game 14, danger by design. Nancy interns in a Paris fashion house, despite having the fashion sense of someone who never outgrew their horse girl phase, and determines to find out why her new boss, renowned designer Minette, has been behaving strangely recently. Game 15, The Creature of Capu Cave. In The Creature of Capu Cave, or Free Labor, The Vacation Package, Nancy travels to Hawaii, thinking she's simply going to be undertaking some unpaid labor, this time studying bugs. But oh honey, as usual, she is very wrong. Game 16, The White Wolf of Icicle Creek. A wolf is accused of poisoning a potato salad at a remote lodge in Canada, among other acts of sabotage. Game 17, Legend of the Crystal Skull. The goth cousin of the franchise, Legend of the Crystal Skull, takes place in New Orleans, where Nancy looks into the suspicious death of a man who may have owned an infamous cursed crystal skull. Game 18, The Phantom of Venice. The Italian secret police ask for Nancy's assistance, investigating a series of robberies, and she doesn't eat pizza or pasta even once, which, in my opinion, which I highly respect, is a complete waste of a trip to Italy. Game 19, The Haunting of Castle Malloy. In the latest edition of what accent are the Nancy Drew voice actors, God love them, butchering today? Nancy travels to Ireland to be a maid of honor at a wedding, but there's just a teensy tiny little problem. The groom is missing. Game 20, Ransom of the Seven Ships. While trying to find a kidnapped Bess, Nancy makes the most of her vacation on a Caribbean island, engaging in extracurricular activities such as rock climbing, scuba diving, underwater Sudoku, and board game nights with monkeys. Game 21, Warnings at Waverly Academy. You thought your high school had drama? Well, imagine Gossip Girl, but it's Nancy Drew game 
complete with snarky anonymous texts, cat fights, and homework assignment puzzles, all taking place at a private all-girls school. Game 22, Trail of the Twister. Sabotage again, this time of a team of professional tornado chasers, which has to be one of the top professions I would pay not to have to do. Secrets can kill remastered. Secrets can kill now with 3D graphics. Game 23, Shadow at the Water's Edge. Nancy embraces her inner weeaboo to become an English teacher in Japan, but a slight wrench is thrown in her plans when she starts to be stalked by the girl from the ring. Game 24, The Captive Curse. A Frankenstein wannabe has been menacing a German castle, and naturally, it is Nancy's job to stop the monster from... doing that. Game 25. Alibi and Ashes. Nancy goes to jail for arson, and instead of hiring legal representation, asks her best buddies and her boyfriend to help her be acquitted of the crime. Game 26, Tomb of the Lost Queen. The ideal game for anyone who went through an Egyptology phase as a kid, Tomb of the Lost Queen follows Nancy as she joins an archaeological dig to explore an ancient tomb, which, of course, is said to be cursed. Game 27, The Deadly Device. Her interactive fan service game for STEM students. If you're horny for Nikola Tesla, this game is for you. Deadly Device is, after Secrets Can Kill, the only other game so far to feature a murder. Game 28, Ghost of Thornton Hall. The product of someone on the Her Interactive team becoming obsessed with Southern Gothic literature, probably, Ghost Thornton Hall takes Nancy to the American South to search for a missing bride. Game 29, The Silent Spy. A Scottish spy ring seems to be connected to something in Nancy's past. Cue the Mission Impossible theme here. Game number 30, The Shattered Medallion. Nancy goes on reality TV, and not as one of the desperate housewives of River Heights. Instead, she takes part in a game show which is like Survivor, but boring, and meets Sunny June in person for the first time. Game 31, a Labyrinth of Lies. Nancy jet sets off again. Seriously, this girl goes on more vacations than Barbie. To volunteer at a museum in Greece and meets a bunch of angsty theater kids who all seem to have something to hide. Game 32, Sea of Darkness. Yet another missing persons case for Nancy, this time set in Iceland and distinguished by being partly set on a magnificent pirate ship. Game number 33, Midnight in Salem. Nancy is pulled into an intrigue related to the historic Salem witch trials and may, or may not, but probably may, fall in love with her rival Deirdre along the way. Nancy Drew, controversy in Salem. Here is where things start to get really juicy. Pop some popcorn, pour yourself a glass of your favorite beverage, and settle in for some thick, meaty controversy. There are two main controversies I want to discuss. The first surrounding Her Interactive's most recent game, Midnight in Salem. For years, Her Interactive had regularly been releasing two games a year, but in 2014 they hired a new CEO called Penny Milliken. The Nancy Drew fandom, known as the Clue Crew, which will always be upsetting to me, why isn't it the Fancy Drews? It's fun, it's a pun, it would make an amazing drag queen name, but I digress. The fans hate Penny Milliken. Nancy Drew games were successful in the eyes of its fans, but not really financially. Her Interactive isn't exactly a AAA studio, so the company, under the guidance of Penny Milliken, decided to make some changes. Game 32, Sea of Darkness, was released on schedule in 2015, with a post-credits teaser for the next game, as was tradition for the series. The next game was called Midnight in Salem, and it had a planned release date of 2015. However, this didn't happen. In a dramatic and horrifying move, Her Interactive fired around half of their staff, including much-beloved Nancy Drew voice actress Lanny Manella. The Clue crew was especially upset about this, thinking that Her had fired Lonnie because she was too old for the role, but former Her Interactive employees have come out and said that it was really because of unprofessional behavior from Lonnie. Her announced that they would be totally changing the look of the Nancy Drew games, and that Midnight in Salem would be created with the Unity engine rather than the in-house engine they'd used to create their games in the past. 
As time went on, Hur continued to push for the release date for Midnight in Salem and became even worse at communicating than your shitty ex-boyfriend. When the delay grew and grew and the Clue crew voiced their concern, Hur's responses were evasive if they even did reply. Against all odds, Midnight in Salem eventually released in late 2019 and disappointed absolutely everybody. The much-hyped Unity graphics looked straight out of an early PlayStation 3 game, the controls were clunky, the lip-syncing was jarringly unsynchronized, the puzzles, of which there were a few, weren't fun or interesting, and a lot of people weren't even able to get the game to run on their computers. Ironic that the focus of the game is the Salem Witch Trials, because I think if the Clue crew could burn Penny Milken at the stake as a witch, I don't think they'd hesitate. One of the most hilarious, ironic things to come out of this situation is that the knockoff Nancy Drew game series called Miss Clue, which instead of starring Nancy Drew, stars a time-traveling Jane Austen, was able to make and release a knockoff version of Midnight in Salem called Trials of Salem, which featured Lonnie Manella, that's right, the ex-voice actress of Nancy Drew. Well, they were able to release it long before her interactive released Midnight in Salem. Then, in 2020, there was further controversy when one of her interactives past games was suddenly discontinued. Slight spoiler for Ransom and the Seven Ships here, but it doesn't really matter as you technically can't buy it anymore and it was a shitty game anyway. One of the characters in the game uses blackface, a white character basically disguises himself as a black person, and her hastily pulled the game from online stores so as to mitigate any further drama, as they really do not need any more negative press or ill will from the fans at the moment. Now you have people selling this game for $379 on eBay, and if any of you are watching that listing, I implore you, it's not worth it. It's not even worth $30. Three, maybe. $2.75. Currently, the fate of the Nancy Drew series and her interactive hangs in the Twilight Zone. In response to comments on social media, her insists that they are making a 34th game, although they haven't released any concrete information about it and there is noticeably no teaser for a new game at the end of Midnight in Salem. I really genuinely hope that her interactive are able to pull themselves out of this slump and create great games again, and I hope they learn from some of the valid criticisms the Clue crew had of Midnight in Salem. Hopefully you are now enlightened about what the deal is with the Nancy Drew games, and feel confident enough to write me a 10-page essay which I will expect on my desk first thing Monday morning. I highly encourage you to check out these games for yourself if you haven't already, whether you buy them from Steam or Big Fish Games. Please don't buy from Her Interactive's website. They rip you off and make you spend an additional six hecking dollars just so you can download the game multiple times and it doesn't disappear into the void when you uninstall it. The Nancy Drew games have given me so much joy and one of the best things about them is that there's something in them for everyone. The things I like about them are often very different from the things someone else likes about them, even if we love the games equally as much. They're nostalgic and fun and compelling and cozy, and I really hope this isn't the end for them.